Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Command K-Max is back. Customs helicopter hit by ground fire. Airbus working on a way to reuse rocket booster engines. I'm Brie Cross, it's June 9th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In this report, we see that some products are just too good not to have around. Command Corporation has resumed production of the commercial K-Max heavy lift utility helicopters. The aircraft will be manufactured at Command's Jacksonville, Florida and Bloomfield, Connecticut facilities, and production and hiring for the program has already begun. The first new helicopter is expected to be delivered in early 2017. First certified in 1994, the single-engine, single-seat K-Max is a rugged, low-maintenance aircraft that features a counter-rotating rotor system and is optimized for external load operations and designed specifically for vertical reference flight. The aircraft can lift up to 6,000 pounds. Launch customers include current K-Max operators Rotex Helicopter AG of Switzerland and Helicopter Express of Chambly, Georgia. Command Aerospace Group President Greg Steiner said, quote, The reopening of the production line is a positive development for our company, the industry, and our customers. I am particularly pleased that Charlie Command's visionary design for this unique aircraft has stood the test of time. End quote. This report seems to confirm again that our southern border is a war zone, as a U.S. Customs and Border Protection helicopter operating in U.S. airspace near Laredo, Texas, was fired on from the Mexican side of the border forcing the pilot to initiate an emergency landing. The aircraft was flying in support of a mission to intercept drugs coming across the border from Mexico, according to authorities. The incident reportedly occurred in a subdivision of Laredo. A source said that it was a well-coordinated operation on both sides of the border. At least five shots were fired and three hit the aircraft with one striking the cabin. A body armored vest placed on the floor of the aircraft was credited with saving the life of one person on board the aircraft. Agents routinely place their vests on the floor just for that purpose as gunfire always comes from beneath the helicopters. After the break, Airbus to reuse rocket booster engines. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Airbus Defense and Space is getting into the reusable rocket booster business with a five-year plan to design a first stage for its Ariane rocket that can be recovered on a normal runway. Called Adeline, which is short for Advanced Expendable Launcher with Innovative Engine Economy, the design resolves some of the issues that have caused SpaceX to lose the boosters it has tried to recover on its floating platform. According to reports, Adeline is different from the Falcon 9 booster in that only the engine and avionics are recovered. After it is used, that portion of the spacecraft separates from the main body of the boosters and flies back to Earth with winglets and turbofan engines landing on a conventional runway. It has the unique appearance of a flying garbage can. Airbus officials said that the first flight test of the Adeline was being targeted for some time in 2020. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. We'll start off in the middle of the country in Nam Noster, Missouri at Whiteman Air Force Base. 
which is the home of the B-2 bomber. On the weekend of June 13th and 14th, Wings Over White Man features the Air Force Thunderbirds, the Army Golden Knights, and lots of other fantastic performers. On June 13th, you can check out what is called the highest show on Earth. Held in Breckenridge, Colorado, Aurora Air Shows presents Night Axe, Solo Aerobatics, Team Aerobatics, and Warbird Axe. Now we'll head east to Ocean City, Maryland. June 13th and 14th marks the 2015 OC Air Show. The show features the Navy Blue Angels and the Breitling Jet Team along with other top performers. You'll enjoy the OC Air Show in the Drop Zone Beach at Show Center. And last but not least, if you need an excuse to take a trip to Paris, France, the Paris Air Show is being held between June 15th and 21st and is the perfect reason to get out of town. This international air event has absolutely everything in aviation and aerospace. After these messages, a new TSA administrator has been nominated. Now certified, Aspen Avionic Single Band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI-340 Quattro tso airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip with integral backup battery. Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to bendixking.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation has approved the nomination of U.S. Coast Guard Vice Admiral Peter V. Neffinger for the post of Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security and Administrator of the TSA. Other Senate committees have 30 days to consider the nomination. The FAA and General Aviation Groups are launching the Fly Safe National Safety Campaign. Its aim is to educate the GA community on how to prevent loss of control accidents this flying season. These accidents take about 450 lives per year. A recent NTSB safety alert references visual traffic maintaining separation from other aircraft. The NTSB says that technically advanced cockpits and the use of personal electronic devices can distract pilots from looking for in-flight traffic. The Australian Transportation Safety Board is requesting that the United States and Europe make safety improvements on helicopters. They are asking that manufacturers install fuel tanks that provide a reduced risk of post-impact fire. Gulfstream Aerospace will expand its site in Long Beach, California, creating at least 50 jobs in its product support organization. Gulfstream will grow with the opening of a 19,000 square foot maintenance hangar and 10,000 square feet of support and office space. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. A new version of Avidyne's IFD series, FMS, GPS, NAV, and COM iPad application is now available for learning more about the operation of Avidyne's IFD series flight management systems. The updated iPad app provides fully interactive free play demonstration capability for the new IFD 440 as well as adding new IFD 540 functionality that is representative of Avidyne's soon to be certified release 10.1 software. Dan Schwinn, Avidyne CEO, said that the iPad app provides customers and potential buyers with valuable product familiarization and the ability to try out all the new features. The revision 10.1 version of the IFD 540 IFD 440 iPad app is available now as a free download from the Apple's iTunes App Store. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Air News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.